Oh man, hair is ridiculous. Okay, hold that, don't move, and perfect. Hold that right there, good exposure. Right there, hold that, hold that. Nice, okay, look down, just move your chin a little to the left. Good, right there, don't move, don't move, perfect. Ever wonder how film photographers get their images digitized if you don't have a scanner? I have a great, easy system for you to use. I've helped a lot of my friends set up this system. It's foolproof, it's easy, it doesn't cost very much money, especially when you have a digital camera already. I'm gonna show you how I get my analog pictures digitized, and you can upload them to Instagram, Facebook, send them to friends. It's a super easy system. Come on, let me show you how I do it. So one of the reasons I love this system that I use to digitize my negs really quickly is I can see exactly what this picture is gonna look like before I go in the dark room, waste any test strips or waste a test print. I know what this picture is gonna look like. So this is a quick, efficient, easy way and more cost-effective way of saving a bit of money uh, before you go in the dark room and start printing to see exactly what this picture is going to look like. So here's my little editing corner, my light table, my copy stand, and I'm going to refer to this uh, throughout this video as scanning the negatives, even though we're not scanning them, we're taking a digital photograph. We've gone through and I went into the dark room, I developed the film, I dried them, got the film from the dryer, we laid them out, we did an initial edit of the negatives and we did our initial selections. And now we're gonna come back onto our copy stand and we are gonna start photographing the negatives. And I'm gonna show you this easy way of digitizing your analog negatives. I'm gonna take you through a couple of the simple things that you need to digitize your negatives. I bought an old copy stand. I got this for 20 bucks. It was an old copy stand, but it works perfect. It's all you need. Uh, an LED light panel. If you have one of these, there's all kinds out there and they're cheap now. And I'm using my Sony a7R 3 camera. I like it because it has a nice big file and you can crop in if you need to. And the beauty of these Sony cameras and all these new mirrorless cameras now is you can buy these adapters. And I'm actually using an old 50 millimeter Canon FD mount lens that I purchased for $75. The adapter is $20, and you can use an extension tube, but essentially you need a camera that can shoot macro photography. So once you have this set up, you're ready to go to copy your negatives, uh, digitize these analog negatives into a digital format. So after I'm set up and I have everything in place, I have my negative in place, one of the first things I do is I have a level. I actually level the back. I know all these little cameras have built-in levels, but they don't really work that great. So I use an actual level and I make sure that everything is uh, set up and level. And then once you're ready to go, you know that you're gonna be square on the negative. The next step is, is I take my negative, I give it a little splash of uh, dust off. You wanna watch when you use this dust off that you don't shake it when you use it because it can leave a mark on your negative. And then I do the initial focus at the back and then I go in for a close focus. And for me, the way I meter is I shoot everything at F8. This lens is kind of optimized at F8 to F11. So I just shoot everything at F8. I use ISO 200 and my shutter speed right now is a 50th of a second, and I meter through the histogram at the back. After I do that, I make sure that the negative is nice and flat, and then I fire off five or six images so we don't get any camera shake, and that's it. Your white balance doesn't matter. I shoot in auto, but we're gonna finesse it in Photoshop and finish it off in Photoshop. Whether you're shooting black and white negatives, color negatives, 
or even if you're shooting transparencies. You set up all the same and you take pictures all the same. Now I will say when you are shooting transparencies, you want to shoot on auto white balance and you want the exposure correct. And you'll be able to see on the back of your camera how well it's turning out so you want to adjust to that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make some scans of some of the negatives here and then we're going to go up in the studio on the computer and I'm going to show you my process from there. All right. Now I've taken my digital files and I've ingested them into my computer using Photo Mechanic like I normally do. I just check out the sharpness and I make my selects and then I put them in a select folder. So I have that folder here. You can see I have a couple of different scans for you. And I'm gonna show you my process of developing these. It's super easy. I launch this in Photoshop. I take the gray picker. I pick on the rebate here or the border of the image and that's it. That's all I do and I don't, I don't use any of these controls at all. And then I open the image. First thing I do is I crop the image and we'll crop this like this. Make sure that's straight. And then I'm going to rotate it and then I hit invert and that's the file we get. First step is with levels. I knock my levels down and it's just like being in the dark room. You start making aesthetic decisions and looking at exactly kind of how the light was. I look at that. That looked pretty good. That looks pretty good. And then I do a curves adjustment on it. And that's looking pretty good as well. You know, I wanted this picture moody, so that's what I'm creating a little bit. And then with this one, I'm going to vignette it a little bit. I have action set up. And I'm just going to pull down the corners and vignette this we bet flatten that that's looking really good now i might play with the mid-tones in the levels a wee bit and another final curves just give his face a bit more pop um, as you can see i have a little dust spot i'm going to get rid of that super quick a couple over here one there and that's it there's my photograph sometimes if it's got a bit of color and I don't like it I convert it to a gray scale and then I know it's completely gray and then I'll go back to an RGB so that it's more accurate and that's my final photograph right there I work in 16-bit I make that 8-bit And then I will save that, and I'll save that right as a 12. And it's as simple as that. Look how great that looks. Very fast, efficient method of black and white. And I'm gonna show you two more. This is from a color slide. And then I look for a piece of gray again. Do my balance. And then with here, I will do a little bit of corrections because this is just like this is just like a photograph from your digital camera and do whatever kind of normal corrections you do. Let's open that up. I'm going to crop this. This is an old Kodachrome slide that I'm going to send to a friend of mine. That's why I did this up. And then from here we you just do your regular process. I do my levels. I do make sure that's looking good. Um, I have a few actions that I'll do on this. Knock that back. And I'm kind of rushing here, but normally I do this a little slower and watch it. Give it a little sharpen. I 
And there, again, that looks really good. And that's just from a super quick shot of a Kodachrome slide on the light table. So let's save this. And the last one I'm going to show you is from a color negative. Again, I'm going to pick on the rebate. I generally don't let the color temperature go all the way down to 2200. I pick it back up to about 2300. I find it looks a little weird for some reason if you do that. The one other thing you will notice here is this is pretty dark and black. One of the things that I do is I make a little mask for my negatives, like a neg carrier. I make it just out of thin black cardboard and that just prevents any light from spilling up into the lens and causing reflections. So using a mask is a really good idea when you do this as well. Again, I'm gonna do my crop. So the first thing I do is I do a levels and I start to get it in the ballpark there. And then I'll do a slight curves on it. And now with these, one of the easiest ways that you can do this is just do an auto color and boom, you are right getting real close. And then I'll start just adjusting the way this image should look. Go up with the curves a bit. And then I will do an auto contrast and even an auto tone. Um, and then bang, you have your image right there. And that's looking really close. And this is an old um, color negative from an ad campaign that I worked on. Uh, but again, for a really quick scan, this isn't a drum scan and it's not even as good as an Epson scan, but for a really quick two second shot with your digital camera, this looks really good. And then of course you got to touch up the dust and stuff like that. And that's it. Super quick, efficient, cost effective. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get your analog photos digitized. Um, it's not going to be like a drum scan or even an Epson scanner, but for uh, a real quick scan, they're great. Black and white works better, of course, on this than color negative and color slide transparency works really well uh, as well. So I hope you like this. Don't forget to subscribe, hit a like, leave me a comment on what you like and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. I hope to help the film photographer and large format photographer out. See you next time. Cheers.